we've been talking about John the Baptist and Elizabeth and uh, how they, uh, Zacharias and how uh, John the Baptist was born and uh, the dreams that Zacharias and Elizabeth had and God gave them other, another dream. Today we're going to talk about Mary and the dream that God gave Mary. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We will look in God's Word. So Lord, uh, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to be in your house. It's always a, a joy. Father, I thank you for the time that we can come and open your Word. And Lord, we ask you to speak as only you can. Father, we pray that um, as I seek to uh, preach the Word, that Spirit, that you will uh, take the Word and deliver it to every one of us. Lord, challenge us so that the will of God can be done in our lives. Jesus, we thank you for being Emmanuel. We thank you for uh, coming to this world to make a way for us. And I do pray there will be room in our heart for you today. Father, I pray that uh, you will use this time together. Lord, that uh, you would be honored in this time. Draw us close. You deserve our greatest praise. I pray that this morning we will do nothing less than that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We all have dreams in our lives, don't we? When, we, when I was a little boy, it was like every other boy. I didn't know if I wanted to be an astronaut. I don't know why it was about being a fireman. All the boys wanted to have a fire truck, be a fireman. I wanted to be a baseball player. I played baseball, by the way, but uh, not like Hank Aaron. There was a vast difference. When I hit the ball, they caught it. When he hit the ball, they looked up and watched it go. Big difference, big difference. But we all have our dreams. But when God made you, He had a dream for you too. And here's the thing. The plans that God has for us and the plans that we have for ourselves, our dreams and God's dreams, when they come together, something magical can happen. One of my favorite chapters in God's Word is Psalms 37. And one of the verses, Psalms 37 verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. A lot of times people preach that, that you just delight yourself in God and, and he'll just, all the dreams that you have, he'll come true. That's not true. That's a misinterpretation of it. But literally, let me just shorten it for you today. When your dreams become God's dreams, when you take God's dreams and you just take yours and put them together, when His will and your will come together, something magical can happen. And when you start desiring the things that God desires, when you start living for the things that God created you to live for, He will give you the desires of your heart. But the other side of that is that when we, what happens when we ask and we get something different? Y'all you know, know what y'all are hearing? Do y'all hear that? That's the TV down the hall. It's on tape delay. Last week I went outside to get a water and I was here, I, I heard the choir and then I went out down the hallway and when I got down the hallway, I heard myself giving the announcements or stating something. I'm like, what in the world? Uh, I, I guess it's kind of like when the Holy Spirit works in our life and there's a, um, we, we pray one thing, but there's a delay in answering the prayer. Maybe that's how it is in our church too. I don't know. I don't know. But what happens when, when our prayer and God's prayer isn't the same prayer? You know, James chapter 4 verse 3 says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may consume it, that you may spend it on your pleasures, your will. What happens when our dreams are to fulfill what we want 
And yet God says that's amiss. I'm not going to bless that. I'm not going to answer that. What happens? He's not going to do that, and we get disappointed. You ever been disappointed with God? Don't look holy. You know you have. You know when you were expecting one thing and then you went to God? How many of you said to God, why, God, why? Because you were expecting something else. But God is able. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. He is able to take and do more than you could ever dream. Beyond that, exceedingly, abundantly, above that. I think about little Mary, a teenage girl, probably a humble girl. The Bible says that she was from the city of Nazareth, a very small town. Actually, when it describes it here in, in verse number 26, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Why did he put it in such a way? Why did Luke say that? Because it was such a small place. When Jesus, later on in his ministry, he was Jesus of Nazareth, they said, can anything good come from Nazareth? It's such a small, insignificant place. So Mary grew up not in the pomp of the world, just a small girl from a small place. But God saw great things that he had planned for her. When you think that you're overlooked, <clears throat> when you think that nobody sees or nobody cares, when you think that you have no value, when you think that uh, you cannot do any great thing, when you think that dreams are to be dreamed and, and, and never to be realized. Just understand, we have a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that you could ask of God, anything that could even come into your mind. We have that kind of a God. And that's what happened with Mary. She was probably just excited because there were some plans that had been made for her life. And you know, with those plans came dreams. Look what it says in verse 30, 27, this angel came to speak to her to a virgin. Defines it right off the bat. She was a virgin. We'll talk more about that in a second. She was betrothed. The word means legally engaged. He would come and make his pledge. The families would get together and, and they would say words together over each other. It wasn't a marriage yet, but it was the betrothal. It was the legal, it was the legal uh, coming together, the beginning of it. Now, what would happen was Joseph would go and make plans, make ready for the, for the, for the wedding. A lot of times it would be to go to his parents' house and build on a room so that he and his bride would come because oftentimes they would live in the same house. All men, y'all look at me. If that was the way it was today, y'all look like this. <laughs> Amen? How many of you would like to go live with your in-laws or bring your bride to live with your parents? Can, can y'all say, oh me? Aren't you glad that some things change? Well, during that time, he would make ready and, and then they would come together and they would have the, the actual ceremony where they would become one. So the, the, part of this has started. And you know, she's dreaming. Ladies, you think about how you're going to set up the house. You're thinking about the kids and where they'll go to school and all the, the things and, and the showers. You know, they had to have showers like y'all have today where they make the guys sit there and look like they're happy. When, when there's 75 presents to be opened, and he just has to smile. And, you know. I, I was there too. I had to go through all that. I think that's a rite of passage, isn't it, man? We just have to go through those things. She had dreams. But now Gabriel comes, and 
He said, no, we got something else. He said, she was, she was betrothed to a man whose name was David of the house, uh, main name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. This is what Gabriel said to her. He said, uh, having come in, the angel said, rejoice, highly favored one. In verse number 30, at the end, he says, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You are highly favored. You have found favor with God. It means great grace has been bestowed upon you. Y'all look up here. When you come into this world to, to really have that which matters, we don't have it. But God comes and bestows grace, that which you do not deserve that which you cannot repay. It's just a free gift from a grateful Father who only wants to bless. And grace is never ending. So what he was doing with Mary, he said, you have found great grace from God. Mary didn't even realize it. But, but what she was going to find was that she was going to realize it more and more and more and more in her life. That's the same way it is with us. If we could just stop and pause and look, we would understand that God is going to bless, come on, and bless. And something else might come ha and happen to us, and we say, that can't be a blessing, but we find out that it is a blessing. And He blesses. And he does something else, and you say, sometimes, God, your presence that you give, it comes wrapped in some strange paper. I, I, I wish that it had been differently, but if we could just see the beauty, it's God's best. And Mary did not understand, what does this mean that, that I have been given great grace? What does this mean? He says, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you. Anointed. The plans of God are with you. Not just Mary. Okay, let's make this first person. God's plans are with you. God's blessing, God's grace is with you. You're not just insignificant. You're not just walking through time. God has plans. Plans of blessings for you and for others. God wants to do something sweet. Oh, when we get to heaven and we understand. We don't always understand here, do we? Sometimes we're just confused. I'm kind of glad that the book is unwritten or unread as God writes it until we get there. The people we touch. The way as God blesses us, listen please, listen, and how we are stewards with the grace that is being given to us and how we use that to bless others. We may not even see it yet. But then when we get to heaven and we get to understand the why, and we get to understand that it was worth it, and we get to understand the beauty of it, it might be veiled from our eyes here, but through the walking of faith, we understand that God is doing a God-sized work. A blessed work. A glorious work. You're highly favored. When she saw him, she was troubled. I, I read one of the versions of this and said she was exasperated. I mean, when someone tells you something you don't understand, you ever go, what? I, I say that like that because that's how my mother-in-law used to say it. Something would happen to her. My wife's up there and she'd go, what? Have y'all ever had one of that kind of moments? I think that's kind of what Mary's saying here. What? Brother Mark, I could sing with the sopranos up here. I could do that. <clears throat> she was troubled at the saying, and she considered what matter of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Isn't it funny how when an angel shows up in the midst of people in the Bible, the first thing he says is, don't be afraid. How can you not be? 
How many of y'all, if you saw an angel comes in the glory of heaven and he shows up to you and says, Brother Jim, I have greetings from God for you. Are you going to be, are you going to be anxious? Are you going to be, what? <laughs> don't, don't, don't. No, it's okay. It's okay. He says, you have found favor with God, for behold, you will conceive in your womb. Uh, hold on. As I read these words, I want you to hear it as if you were Mary, the virgin. You will conceive in your womb, bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. By the way, the word Jesus, Yahshua in the Old Testament, Joshua, means God's salvation. God saves. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of of the highest, the Lord God will give him, your child, the throne of his father, David. She knows exactly what that means, Messiah. You're going to have a child. He will be great. He will be called the son of the Lord God in heaven. God's going to make him the Messiah. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there would be no end. Eternal. Do you think she's got goosebumps? Do you think she's got goosebumps on top of goosebumps? Do you think that it, that, that little thing started running up her back and came out to the top of her head and her hair stood straight out? The angel of God, Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, comes, says, don't fear. God's got a blessing for you. This is what's going to happen. It, you are the, being bestowed great grace upon. You're going to be the mother of the God child. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly what would happen. There will be silence in the room. Oh, my. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I, I, I don't understand. Sir, I'm not doubting you. I, I, I just have a question. Did God not tell you I'm a virgin? I, you don't understand. I this is beyond my thoughts. Isn't it funny that when we start seeing the plans of God, the first thing that we see is how it can't happen. If God gave you a vision, I promise you the devil would come whispering in your ear saying, that can't happen. If there's some things that you've been dreaming of, you've been praying for, some children, some grandchildren, some neighbors. You remember four years ago when I came, I said, who's your one? Who's the one that you want to see God to do a work? How many of you would like to see a miracle? How many of you have been praying for a God work in your life, in your family's life, in your, in your circumstances, in the people that you love? You want to see a God pouring out. How many of you would like to see in this world that we live that is so messed up, you'd like to see God just kind of come in and put a blessing, put a, put a grace on it? But yet, if God starts stirring that in your spirit, the first thing that you're going to think is, how can this be? Because God's there, it can be. Because God said it. In Genesis in the creation, Jesus spoke it. The Holy Spirit took it, empowered it, and made it happen, and the Bible says it was good. Why would it be different in your life? Is the process not the same? God speaks it. The Holy Spirit empowers it. It comes to be. And God said it is good. Why would we think anything different?
Well, I give her full credit for saying, I don't understand this. I, I've never known a man. Look, it's absolutely okay to understand the impossibilities as long as you remember that with God, there are no impossibilities. All right? It's, don't stick your head in the sand. It's okay to see what God has to do for a miracle to occur. Just don't doubt that God can make the miracle. Well, he gives the answer, verse 35. The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. When I was 10 years old, when I was young and stupid and ignorant and under conviction, a sinner, the wooing of God came to me. And I had enough of me and I wanted more of Christ. And the best way a 10-year-old could, I gave my heart, my all, my being, my thoughts, my wishes, my wants, my sins, my worry, my fears, my regrets, my life, I gave to Him. And He gave me His all. And the book of Ephesians says it was a betrothal. It was a betrothal. It was a legal engagement. I, I, I'm not to heaven yet, the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm not there yet. But he gave me the wedding ring. The book of Ephesians calls it the earnest of the Spirit. He gave me the Holy Spirit to keep me, to hold me in this time until he takes me and make, makes me his own when we get to heaven. I don't think you caught that. I got all of everything when I received the Holy Spirit of God, and it's the Holy Spirit's job to be with me, to fill me, to lead me, to protect me, to guide me, to empower me. I am safe in the arms of God until the time that I see Him face to face. The Holy Spirit has come and listen to what it says to, 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 to Mary. It's the same thing that happened to us. The power of the highest will overshadow you. And here's the thing. The Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. When I got saved and the Holy Spirit came to live within me, I didn't become the Son of God, but I became a child of God. Not by my own doing, but just the grace of God. When Mary heard this, it says... He said, now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. This is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Uh, it may sound to you as an impossibility, but just, you, you know, you know, cuz, you know, you know, Elizabeth, um, you know how old she is. And, and, and you know, she has lived with this depression in her life because she wanted to have a child. You know this, and you know that she's never had a child. I'm just, she's already pregnant. She's six months along. Mary, just to understand, you, you, you don't understand this, but this is a God thing. And I'm going to give you an example. I, the one that everybody called barren is not barren. She's having a child. Isn't it funny how God will always confirm within you in a small way? When the dream comes, there's that little thing that will come that will go, okay, all right. Then he adds verse 37. Praise God for verse 37. For with God... Nothing, 
No, 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 that nothing. I don't care if it's the Red Sea that's standing in front of you. <laughs> I don't care if it's the mountain that you can't move. I don't care what anybody else thinks of you. I don't care. When you say, I, I, I don't understand it, I've never done it, I can't do that. Have any of y'all ever, ever disqualified yourself from what God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, qualified you for? You said, I can't? Oh, come on. How many of you said, I can't? But with God, there's that word again, nothing will be impossible. All you need is God. I don't think we got verse 37, but I think I got the rest of my life to learn it. One day at a time. Y'all good with that? By the way, if you are having trouble learning it, God will do whatever it takes to teach it to you. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So verse 38, she says, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. If we have a, a verse 38 moment today, God's going to do some things. God's going to do some things. Now, Zacharias, when Gabriel showed up with him and said, you're going to have a boy, he said, how can this be? He didn't believe. And the angel said, well, guess what? You're going to have to be quiet and shut up and just watch. And he goes home and he's with his wife, Elizabeth, and she becomes pregnant and he goes, isn't it funny? God says, you don't believe? You're just going to be still and quiet and watch. Well, Mary believed. If we have a verse 38 moment, something's going to happen in somebody's life today. Because I believe God's in the business of wanting to do something. Nothing's going to be impossible. So what happens? Verse 39, Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with, with haste to a city of Judea and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. She said, I want to see this. And when she got there, you know what she saw? A baby bump. Now, ladies, y'all know when other ladies have the baby bump, amen? Men, y'all need to be quiet because you'll mess it up. Amen? Don't you go to that woman and say, oh, how, how far along are you? I'm not pregnant. Ooh, don't, don't, no, 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 don't do that. Just, no. But she walks in and she sees her. And it's exactly what Gabriel said. And, and, and I love this because there needs to be another amen to it. I love that when, when God says something to us and he brings us that second amen, look in verse number um, 41. It happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary. She just hears Mary. That the baby leaped in her womb. How many of y'all ladies, not men, how many of you ladies have felt the leap? Lynn was at the doctor and she was saying, the baby's kicking. The doctor says, too early, the baby's not kicking. Lynn says, the baby's kicking. She says, it's too early, the baby's not kicking. And then the baby just kicked. And we thank Jared for that. <laughs> just like him. That's why I call him Boomer. Y'all ever heard me call him his nickname Boomer? Because he was kicking a long time before he ever got here. He's still kicking. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came upon her. In verse 42, she spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Hold on. Zacharias was mute. He could not tell her what Gabriel had said to him. But when the Holy Spirit spoke, she knew 
because her spirit and the, and the Lord's spirit were one. And the Lord said, this is the mother of my Lord has come to me. Indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped to my womb. Blessed is she who believed, for there is a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. This is Mary going, okay. This is the amen. I wonder how special Mary felt in that moment to hear somebody else saying the same thing that Gabriel said. Oh, what a child. If, if we just could pause here for a moment, we could take a long time and say, oh, what a child was Jesus. Oh, what a child was Jesus. He had to come of the virgin because he had to be free from the sin of man. So the Holy Spirit came to Mary and she became pregnant with the Holy Spirit so that we could have atonement, so that we could become fresh and clean and new. He came as He did, born of a virgin, to be what He was, and that is sinless. He was what He was, sinless, to do what He did, to, to live the substitutionary death. He died a substitutionary to death to do what He did, atone for sin. He did what He did that we might be born again and go to heaven one day. If there was no sinless sacrifice, there'd be no atonement. If there was no atonement, there'd be no new birth. If there was no new birth, there'd be no hope of heaven. He was born of a virgin that we might be born again. He came to earth that we might go to heaven. He became the Son of Man so that we could become the sons and daughters of God. How can this be? Well, it's just a God thing. God wants to do a saving work in our midst. Look at verse number 46. Mary was not perfect, but she was bestowed upon by a perfect God. A lot of people put Mary up on an altar, and worship her. Please understand, she had to bow her knees and worship the boy that she born. It wasn't her. She was a tool. She was a blessed, called, used child of the King. That it's nothing more than what we are today. But Mary believed. And when Mary began to understand, she began to praise the Lord. Church, I think we do live at deficit today because I, I think we have forgotten what it means to praise the Lord. I think we're worried about how we praise the Lord. I think some people praise the Lord in ways that are uncomfortable for us and in the in that i think we get to this place where we would just rather not praise the lord I, i'll be honest i think people come to church sometimes out of habit and they come and they they, they take a seat and A service comes and a service goes. And there's a blessing that's missed. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be honest. I'm not getting on to anybody. I'm just saying, our Lord deserves to be praised. And if you have been a recipient of the grace of God, you got something to praise God about. Don't let the rocks cry out because you won't praise Him. Sharon, it's good to see you this morning. Had her knee surgery. You walked in. Bless you. 
bless you. Can't keep somebody from church, can you? Does it hurt? Just a little bit. Does my preaching make it hurt worse? Okay. You know, I'm going to read some verses, but I hope you hear more than the words. I hope you hear Mary's heart. Because every one of us in this place has a voice that God wants to hear. Every one of us has a praise that can put a smile on God's face. And you don't have to do it publicly. But I pray that you do it sometime, somewhere. I don't care if you have to whisper it to God. I don't care if you have to veil it in tears. I don't care if you, if you can't hold it within and you jump up and down and you raise your hands and you do cartwheels. I don't care as long as it comes from a heart that is so in love with one that has done so much for you, undeserved as it is. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for He has regarded the lowly state of this maidservant, His maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. We rejoice in her today, and she knew that. And she gave God praise for that. For He that is God... <clears throat> who is mighty, has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy. That, that's, he didn't give me what I deserve, but He's given me grace that's so much more than that. He, his mercy is on those who fear Him. and From generation to generation, I think she's thinking about Isaiah and and David and Moses and all those people who were looking forward to the Messiah. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud to the imaginations of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones, but He's exalted the empty one, the lowest one, the lowly. Any of you ever feel lowly? You're qualified. He's filled the hungry. Any of you ever felt hungry? Hungry for the blessings and the things of God? He's filled the hungry with good things. The rich, oh, the rich he sent away empty. I, I don't want that. You can have everything that this world has to offer and be the poorest be the poorest in hell. He's helped his servant Israel. He's here to help Gainesville. He's here to help New Holland. God wants to do a work in us in remembrance of his great mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed, so he will do in us forevermore. What happens when our dream and God's dream connect together? What happens when we begin to delight in the dream of God? What happens when we lower ourselves and let God find us in that lowly estate and pick us up and bless us? The angels wish Listen, they had what we have. Gabriel, Gabriel knew, though he stood in the very presence of God, he would never have the grace bestowed upon him that has been bestowed upon you. 
You are highly favored one. Bestowed with the grace of God. Do you have anything to praise the Lord for?